Hi, I'm Sean. And I'm Jackie. And this is, is Rookie, Rookie Roost. Roost. In this video, we show you how we installed our vapor barrier and sheathed our subfloor. Okay, so last night we finished doing the insulation and poly. We folded over the edges because we have about a foot of overhang on the sides and the front and the back. So it's just folded over right now because we're about to start our sheathing. Um, to put it on, we started by lining it up so that the center fold was running down to the middle, down the middle as close as we could get it. And then trying to line up the sides and the front and the back so that they all had the same overhang, roughly. Um, then we started by going down the middle and putting staples all down the middle and kind of stretching it out that way as we put staples down. Then from there, we just went down one side, pulled it out and stapled about every six to eight inches or so, going down the boards all the way down. And then we came to this side and did the same thing. Our vapor barrier is simple poly in a roll that was 100 feet long by 10 feet wide. We planned to use it for all the walls and ceiling as well. We then started to install the bottom plate. So we're getting some measurements for our bottom plate, which we're going to use as a guide for our walls. And to do this, we've just put a board all the way up against the wheel well. And now we're measuring down below at the front flange here. And this is going to be the length of the board. We're not going to go off the model for this because we want it to be exact to the trailer, not exact to whatever the model thinks it's supposed to be. So I'm just going to use a speed square to make sure that's all straight in there and draw a line. And that's where we're going to make our first cut. We already know that this is square to the front here because we laid them both out and used the square just to make sure. And basically we're going to work our way around the trailer like this, making sure everything is square to start and then make some measurements corner to corner just to make sure it's definitely going to be square all around. Okay, so we've got the three pieces cut for our bottom plate for the front of the trailer here. So what we're going to do is just clamp down this one. This one exactly where we want it. We're going to clamp it down and then we're going to screw up through the trailer. They're just inch and a half with a flat end on one end. We're going to screw up into the wood and that'll just hold the piece there. This isn't going to be structural at all. It's just going to be so that this piece doesn't move while we put in our sheathing. We're doing it a bit differently. Most people put a bottom plate on top of sheathing. We're going to put our sheathing inside of it because that means that we won't need extra pieces of plywood to cover this span here. This is less than eight feet once you have the bottom plate on. So here we're making the hole bigger. And then we add the screws. And just like so. Before screwing it down, we added some sill gasket. As you can see, we just stapled it to the bottom of this board. So yeah, we'll do it on the other end. Now we'll attach the other boards and some sill gasket. Okay, so we're ready here to start putting the sheathing down. So we're just wrapping this around and securing it to get it ready to put on the sheathing. So we decided that stapling it against the bottom plate here would keep it so that it's nice and tight and it's not getting in the way like, you know, as you're trying to put in the board because it's really loose there. So yeah, we're just pulling it from the in, you know, from the middle against so it's snug against the board and then putting in a staple and then hammering them down so that they're flat afterwards and uh, fixing up the corners too so that they're not as bubbly. Figuring out how you want it to fold up your wall once, it's, once the sheathing is in. Try to have some sort of straight fold in there and then staple it down. We put down sill gasket underneath our bottom plates and on the trailer here just to act as a, a little bit of insulation and also to level out it with the wood because the wood is actually sticking up just a hair above. So now it's actually nice and tight. The sheathing will be nice and tight on it. We needed to make a cut in the vapor barrier around the wheel wells in order for the sheathing to sit properly. It was too bunched up around the wheel wells and would have prevented the sheathing from laying flat. We will eventually insulate all around the wheel well and we'll join the poly to additional poly that we'll install on the interior of the house. 
So after cutting the poly on all four corners of the wheel wells, we decided to put down a couple strips of this red tuck tape, just so that it would stay in place and create a bit of a seal from the bottom of the trailer, because there is a little bit of a gap here between the fender and the trailer frame. We then began cutting and test fitting the sheathing. This is where we had to compensate for our improper joist placement. It was a fairly simple fix and luckily will be completely concealed under our kitchen storage area. We also took the time to confirm the bottom plates were square. We took it one sheet at a time, placing a sheet, confirming the measurement for the next sheet, cutting, and placing the next one. The sheathing process was not without difficulties. We just finished test fitting our sheathing and then we realized after we got it off that we should seal this up a little bit better so that when the sheathing's on, we don't have to worry about trying to get under it to seal. So we've sealed this up higher. Um, we also noticed when we were test fitting these pieces in here that this area was really tight because we had one that ended about here and we had this little piece in here that we were trying to wiggle in, try to get our fingers under to get the tongue into the groove and it was not fitting very well. Um, so if you're sheathing around bottom plates like we are on this trailer, make sure that you have ample um, room in here for wiggling and getting your fingers under because it was just way too difficult. We had to cut it like three or four times just to get it to fit. Um, so yeah, so just a heads up for that. We also noticed something after test fitting that our um, parts where they join were not on a beam initially. And that was because when we decided to insulate the subfloor, we planned for the insulation and didn't realize that our original design had the beams in a certain location because of the length of the boards so that they would land on beams thinking that it was going to be easy to just install the insulation 16 inch on center and everything would be fine um, the problem is with that is your sheathing that you put on actually doesn't line up on the joists like it should at the seams um, because it's actually 47 inches if you factor in the tongue and groove section that overlap so instead what you probably should do if you're framing this way is make it so that you are in line with your sheathing, not the insulation. So before we put in all of the subfloor sheathing, we're going to mark on our bottom plates where all the joists are so that we can run a chalk line over the sheathing later so we know where to screw in in order to fasten the sheathing to the deck. So I'm going to do that now. I'm just going to use a square so that I can get straight on to the middle of a joist and then just make a mark with a pencil. And I'll do that on every one. Finally, it was time to permanently install the sheathing. First, we applied some black goo called acoustic sealant. It's a common product to use whenever you're installing a vapor barrier. It completely seals off the space and ensures an airtight enclosure. It never dries out and it makes a complete mess if it gets on you, so take care when using it. So this is the tricky part. Yeah, well we cut it enough so that it makes it look easy, basically. Let's get that. Close. Or in. Just close. Like, I'm mine's in right now. I just fell in. That's good. We can just let it down. I mean, if you can try to maneuver yours in, oh, my fellow. Okay. Just put it down and knock it in. How much space do you have there? What's your gap? Quite a bit. I have an eight patch. Okay, let's set it down then. It's not going to rest yeah. in there. So pull up the plastic. We were careful to make sure the sheets were laid down without moving around too much and tried to line up the tongue and groove. We gave each piece a little tap to ensure that they were slotted together properly. Yeah, we, we definitely made it big enough to get in now. So I can kind of push down a bit and get my end. How's yours doing? Yeah. Sweet. I think the tongue's in. So don't push. I'm going to bash it in yeah. the middle.
At the end, we laid down the last strips of sill gasket and attached the end bottom plate. Finally, it was time to get screwing. We used 3 inch deck screws to fasten down the subfloor sheathing. Sean drilled pilot holes and I followed along with the screws. Here we learned how valuable a tool belt would be. Our method was to stretch the tape measure out from the marks we made on the bottom plates. We spaced the screws 6 inches apart on the edges of the sheets and 10 inches apart in the field. We probably didn't need to drill pilot holes, but we wanted to make sure the screws went in exactly where we wanted them. So that's it. Remember to like and leave a comment and subscribe if you're new to our channel. Bye. Bye.